Jen, Jen, I did it. I bought the Katia Stands box. Oh, awesome. So you're joining the Imperium then. Oh, my sisters are gonna love that. Well, good luck with it all. <laughs> We all know Katie fell. This is a mockery of everything a badden achieved. And that's why I'm gonna use all the trader bits in this kill team box to customize them. We're bringing Trader Guard back to 40K. Let's do it. So I've got to be honest, it's really exciting. It's been a while since I've bought a big launch box and certainly for a new faction in 40K. And I'm not the only one in the studio who's done this. I don't know who you could be talking about. Mari, what are you doing with your Kadia stands box? Uh, I'm going to use them for 30K. I'm going to make some solo auxilia. Oh, that's going to be so cool. Well, I did just want to take the opportunity to talk about the box a little bit. We didn't get sent this. I bought it out of my own pocket change, smashed out of my piggy bank. And uh, oh, it was a fair few dollar -y dues. I can tell you that. But I have to say the box is really nice. The codex art is lovely. Shame it'll be obsolete in six months. And all the models in there are gorgeous. Like truly the sculpts are fantastic. I didn't know how much the Cadians needed an update until I saw the new models. The thing that's really nice to see is there hasn't been the scale creep that people have been paranoid about on the internet. I know the Kaiserkin ended up being quite large. These models are not crazy giant. Of note, the kit I'm probably the most excited to tackle is the new field guns. Yes. <laughs> I know you love that big boy. These are such an important thing. It's a huge part of the military aesthetic that I think Astra Militarum are kind of trying to capture that between World War One and World War Two time period, but in space. And it's just such an important part of the arsenal. It's so good that they're finally in plastic. So I'd looked through Kadia stands and now I grabbed my giant kill team Morok box and had a look at the blooded kill team. I have to say I've been hopelessly optimistic for Trader Guard for the last like three years, ever since Forge World completely got rid of Trader Guard as a faction. And seeing that they still haven't gotten a codex, even after Blackstone Fortress, Renegade Guard, Chaos Mutants, Negavolt Cultists, I gave up. And I decided what I wanted to do was actually create just an Imperial Guard army using the Imperial Guard rules, but making them thematically traitors. These are not slavering Chaos Worshippers. These are people that are disenfranchised with the Imperium and trying to use the Great Rift as an opportunity to basically split off and become independent. Something I've noticed about this new rulebook for the guard, which is really exciting for me, is you can actually add Ogren bodyguards to characters like commissars. So originally I wasn't actually going to build the commissar or the Ogren from the trader box. I didn't really have a use for them in a 40K army, but um, yeah, I think I'm gonna build them as well. That's so cool. I can actually start to really flesh out a trader guard army as guard. This might become more than just a kill team. Yeah, this is dangerous. So as I started to clip out these models from the sprues, I had a couple of considerations to balance against. I was trying to convert warriors that not only worked as a really fun kill team, but also that fit a profile in the new Imperial Guard book. But as I picked pieces from both the Cadian sprues and also the blooded sprues, I needed to find bits that were compatible between the two kits. Uh -huh, and how'd that go for you? amazingly well. The kits are almost interchangeable and the scale is identical. With some very minor gap fitting and clever use of parts, you can literally interchange most of this kit. I can't help but notice, I feel like you're committing some heresy here. What, shaving off an Aquila? Yeah. Well, you know, on the topic of shaving off Aquilas, I'm super glad they've got rid of the Aquila on the chest of the Cadian guard armor. It means I only have to shave them off the Cadian helmets. Well, it's shaving. I thought you were going to lead into a Manscaped sponsor. <laughs> Manscaped, reach out. Please. <laughs> <laughs> and one other thing I wanted to do as, as this squad was going to represent a death corpse of Krieg squad in my IG rules, I made sure that every single model had a gas mask. This way we would be able to tell this trader squad from any future traders I make in this army. Love a bit of WYSIWYG. I'm just gonna check in on Dave and see how he's going with his loyalists army. I'm really excited to see what he's been cooking up. Hi, Jen. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How good. It's going well. How are your models? Yeah, they're great. Yeah. They're interesting. The Aquila's missing as well. Oh, probably some battle damage, I'd say, Jen. Oh. Just, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, well, mm. I mean, good luck with this. Stray bullet, you know, maybe the Aquila saved his life and all that. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay. All right, well, we'll I'll leave you to it. No and worries. I'll, I'll check in a bit cool. later. I'll keep spreading the good word. And, yeah. yeah. Oh, great, great. Awesome. See ya.
Something I've seen to notice from Games Workshop is they're starting to include a lot more females in their box kits. Yeah, and beyond that, I've also really enjoyed with these kits that I can't really tell. It's quite realistic towards the frames of soldiers in gear. Humans have all different body types and soldiers certainly move towards the homogenous. You can put whichever head or arms or legs or whatever and they all work with these Cadian and Trader kits. They're absolutely fantastic for that. Love that. No ridiculous boob plate either, which is welcome <sighs> and no high heels. Fantastic. Incredible. Remember, in the grim darkness of the future, nobody cares what gender you are while you fight so long as you die for uncaring gods. All right, so for a bit of a showcase piece, I definitely wanted to do something special with the sergeant of this squad. So to do that, I used the sergeant torso from the Cadian Sprue, which has a nice extra strap across it, as well as a small Vox unit and what looks like a few little command accessories. With this, I grabbed my favorite weapon options from the Trader Guard Sprue. I don't really care about weapons or competition. I just thought that the outer outstretched last pistol look really commanding and the chain blade was suitably chaotic and nasty. As a final little nod to my favorite army ever, the Renegades and Heretics or Lost and the Damned, I actually created one using the Cadian legs and one of my old classic Forge World torsos from Renegades and Heretics. I used this as my breaching close combat trader with the shield and shotgun and this also worked surprisingly well and was in scale. How well that lines up is actually crazy. Now although I won't be painting them today as well we've all seen these models before I did also build the traitor Ogren and traitor enforcer to round out the complete kill team. I did make one change however I never liked the bald head on the traitor enforcer because a commissar hat is way cooler. 100%. So, <laughs> so I grabbed a really cool helmet I'm sorry I can't remember where this is from I got it about five years ago that was in my Renegade Bits box and there we go we have a very nasty Chaos Commissar. I'm not sure if this is hobby hack or the worst thing I've ever done. I gotta paint my models and I just realized I have a big gap in the Commissar's neck and I don't have time to use putty so I'm gonna stick blue tack in there and then I'm just gonna cover it in super glue. No one will notice, right? All right, so it's end of the day, sir. We're gonna do a little check up on Dave and see how he's going. Hi, Dave. Oh, hi, Jen. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, good. Oh, these are looking great. Thank you. Yeah, you've put a lot of work into these. Hold on. Yeah, that's a commissar. Yeah, but that's, that's a chaos commissar and an, a chaos ogren and by the Emperor's name. This is heresy! This is heresy! Heretic! All right. Blessed first application of Imperial Primer for the loyal servants of the Emperor. Now down to the nitty gritty of painting. For once I was going to stick to a plan. I am not painting these parade standard like my bloody Alpha Legion for Horus Heresy. Non-metallic metal on 40 Legionnaires and that's part of my 1000 point list. No, this time it's going to be tabletop standard. What's that mean? It means base coat, layer paint, no wash. That's pretty much it. The undersuits of all these models I painted in Vallejo Cold Grey and highlighted with Stonewall Grey. These grey fatigues are meant to be like urban combat and I wanted to make a fairly realistic representation of military uniforms in a dark ashen hive world. To fit in with that, the carapace plates of armor were also painted in a darker grey for a little bit of difference but to keep that urban camo vibe. Metallic areas were painted in Lead Voucher, the trustiest paint ever. And after I had painted on the silver, I could then come in and highlight with Skaven Blight Dinge and Storm Vermin Fur on all of the armored panels. Once these little highlights were done, it was super easy for me to then do a null oil wash over the whole model and that would wash both grays and the metal all together. Ah, some real Imperial efficiency right there. Imperial? What?
for all of the straps and also some of the weapons that had wood hilts, I came in with the trustiest of paints, Rhinox Hide from the Citadel range, and then highlighted with Monfang Brown, washing them all down with Agrax Earthshade. These were keeping some dark, dirty, and evil vibes across all of my models. It's a nice muted palette you got there. The good thing with a muted palette like this is it will allow my spot colors to shine, but also leave heaps of room for the elites and special units in the army to start having more vibrant sashes or golden chaos sigils on them. Which, speaking of golden chaos sigils, the sergeant alone had some special chaos spikes, points, and trophy racks on him, and I painted all of them in Viking gold from scale 75. Well, as the bulk of the paint job gets finished, I had to do some cool colors on them. So I grabbed a teal or a turquoise and I painted stripes along the shoulder and also up the center of the helmet. I then grabbed Araman blue and jade green from Vallejo and highlighted a couple of steps towards the Zenithar regions just to make that a little bit brighter and more attention grabbing. Cloaks, straps and pelts were painted in mixes of khaki undertones to represent the flensed skin as well as dark leather browns on the outside, just like a natural pelt of an animal or raw and rugged leather. On the few visible parts of skin, I just used some different skin tones and painted in whatever color was closest to hand and then chucked on Reichland flesh shade and a couple of highlights. And then for the lenses, I put a nice wash on top of some gray and then came in with a bright green and a white dot just to replicate the lens effect. This led into my finishing touches and one of my pet peeves with Imperial Guard armies is when you have hundreds of models across a table and you can't tell what squad they came from. So I decided for all of my soldiers, I was going to not only paint a squad number, this squad is squad 36, but I was also going to paint their rank. So you see a whole lot of privates in this army. Get the sensor bar ready. Now, on the right shoulder of all of these models, I painted the symbol that this company uses, and it was just a chain link with two chain links attached to it on a teal backdrop. I can't think of anything that this would possibly be representing. Can you? Oh, the chain gang. You got no, nothing, Jen? No, got nothing. All right, fine. I'll I'll lay it out there. It's Alpha Legion. It's clear. It's a subtle reference um... to the Alpha Legion. Now for my central sergeant, it was time to grab some of those lovely sergeant bits from the Cadian kit and paint a Cadia stands fool dead on the base of my glorious traitor. <laughs> oh my God, he looks awesome. <laughs> well, you know, I said dead. I'm pretty sure he's still screaming. So, you know, he's just been chainsawed up a bit. You know, it's interesting. I feel like now perhaps when I made my uh, Saint Celestine diorama and I had all those people burning, perhaps they were traitor guard instead. Well, perhaps you have to prove that on the battlefield, Jen. Mm. My... Oh, the armored glove have been thrown. So for the finishing touches to these models and basing on an ash waste just means painting gray, various different blue grays and brown gray rocks, then dry brushing everything with a lighter gray before a liberal wash of null oil and then some very nice burnt umber pigma powder, not only applied liberally to the bases, but then also flicked up onto the lower parts of the models. Oh yeah, and uh, a guy on the base, he can't be gurgling in his own death throes covered in blood if there's no blood on the guy that cut him up. So I'm gonna just put some blood effects on them and call it done. It's time to show Jen the traitors that are gonna be cutting her down in an upcoming battle.
As always, a huge thank you to our patrons. Your support really means the world to us. It allows us to create two videos a week and a whole bunch of behind the scenes videos, including weekly video updates on our Patreon channel, as well as access to our exclusive mini Discord and our monthly mini review for the $10 tier and up. We'd love to see you down there and to join the party, so please consider signing up below in the Patreon link as it really helps us out and it helps us to tackle even bigger projects. Trust me, grabbing these KDS stands box when Games Workshop ain't chilling them to you, it ain't cheap. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I have corrupted the greatest of Cadia's guard. How does that feel, Jen? Awful. Feels great to me. It's heresy, it's a complete sin. I'm really happy with how these turned out. The kits go together so well, and this has been a really fun project. I hope you've enjoyed the ride. And if you love the ride and you wanna see more Trader Guard as the kits come out, I'd be happy to do some more videos showing off some even wilder, darker conversions to this supposedly sacred Imperial kit. You know what I'm saying? What I reckon everyone would love to see is perhaps a kill team battle between my sisters and your trader guard. A kill team battle? Hmm. But why they've been waiting for six months for the last battle, Jen? Yep, but we're still gonna do a kill team <laughs> battle in like January or something. But hey, best way to find out when it comes out is to subscribe. That's it. Yeah, click that bell icon.